I have a tremendous honor to present someone who has been on the front lines of challenging the terrorism of the United States government. Mm -hmm. Someone who has put their life on the line countless times. Even when some of us said, Medea, that is too crazy. You can't do that. <laughs> Even when we've said, comrade, we're worried for your life. Medea is like the fire department of the movement. When she sees the fires of imperialism blazing across the planet, she runs in that direction to stand with our peoples. I was truly lucky to be with Medea as we took life-saving milk, medicine, and other necessary supplies to break the U.S. blockade on Cuba. Thank you, Medea, for what you do. So first I want to say, and I think it's a collective feeling here, the incredible rage that we feel towards the Biden administration and President Biden himself for what he has done with this summit by thinking that he could decide who to invite and who to disinvite. And so I want to call anybody here who is from Cuba, Venezuela, or Nicaragua to come forward, please, so that we can tell you. Come stand here. Yay! Beautiful, and while you're coming up, those of you who are from Colombia, do you think your country is a democratic country? Those of you who are from El Salvador, do you think your country is a democratic country? Those of you who are from Brazil, do you think your country is a democratic country? So here are three countries represented that we think should be here at the summit because we need to learn from those countries what we all can do better to make the lives of our people better. So let's say, when I say the country, you say presente. Cuba. Presente. Venezuela. Presente. Nicaragua. Presente. Thank you. I also want to ask, thank you, who is the most important person related to this summit of the Americas? Do you think it is Joe Biden? I don't know if you listened to him, but he gave one of the most boring speeches that was full of platitudes that must have put the few people in the room to sleep. What about Kamala Harris? She was supposed to do something about the root causes of migration. And as we've heard from the people on the panel, in your words, I would say, she didn't do shit. Yeah. <laughs> she even promised that there would be money coming, but instead of a billion dollars that was promised to the three countries of the Northern Triangle, there was $40 billion that went to Ukraine to keep a war going there. 
So it wasn't Biden, it wasn't Kamala Harris, it was actually somebody who wasn't there. Can you guess who that was? No, it was Manuel Lopez Obrador. It was AMLO. It was the president of Mexico. I haven't seen a story about the summit that hasn't talked about the president of Mexico not coming and then cascade of the boycott so that other countries didn't come. And that's been the story of this failed summit of the Americas. So for posterity, when I say a line, I want you to repeat it. And these are the lines from Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. There cannot be a summit of the Americas. If all the countries of the American continent do not participate. So let's say, gracias, AMLO. Gracias, AMLO. Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico! So talk about sovereignty. This is just a beautiful example for standing up for sovereignty, for demanding respect from the United States, for demanding dignity. And that is what we take away from this Summit of the Americas, is the standing up. Now, I also saw that a beautiful trovador, who I hope all of you know, Silvio Rodriguez from Cuba, <laughs> did a concert in Mexico City just a couple of days ago. And at that concert, he was gonna sing one of his beautiful songs called El Necio which means the, the stubborn one, right? And he said, this is a song I have dedicated to Fidel Castro. And now I am going to dedicate it to the president of Mexico. And it's a beautiful song. And one of the lines in the song says, the stubbornness of living without a price tag. Huh. La necedad de vivir sin tener precio. That is what Lopez Obrador represents right now, the stubbornness. That is what the people of the continent represent. That is what the people in this room represent. That is what the people summit represents, the stubbornness, the stubbornness that we will not be dictated to by the imperial powers. The stubbornness of the people of Latin America, who after the first tide of progressive government, some call the pink tide, I know Manolo doesn't like the term the pink tide, but after that, when they were attacked by the right wing in their countries, attacked by the US, and some uh, countries lost control of those progressive governments, they are coming back now even stronger because of the stubbornness of the people in those countries who said, we will not allow you to turn our countries into these right-wing neoconservative countries. That is the stubbornness that we appreciate. And one other thing that AMLO said that I think is our marching orders as we go forward, is that not only did we refuse to acknowledge this summit of the Americas, but we are calling for the abolition of the Organization of American States. That is the work that we have to do. I was gonna call out some people who've done some amazing stubbornness, 
like our comrade Walter here who confronted Almagro. I wanted to call out the stubbornness of David Paul right here, the Venezuelan embassy protectors who stayed in the embassy in Washington, D.C. of Venezuela for over a month till the police came in to drag you out. Just stand up for a second. It's this kind of stubbornness that we have to use moving forward. And why I want to end with a quote that was so important to me from Hugo Chavez. When some of us were at one of the World Social Forums, and he looked around the room, huge auditorium, and he saw the American delegation, the US delegation, and he said, the United States is a country of heroes, of dreamers, fighters, the U.S. people with whom we share dreams and ideals must free themselves. Right. And remember, all empires end. One day the decay, one day the decay inside U.S. imperialism, together with the fight from outside, will end up toppling the empire. Those who are victims from outside will be set free, and so will the ones on the inside. That's right, that's the great people of Martin Luther King and Cesar Chavez. This is the message from our comrade. This is the message to go forward. One people, one unity. End the empire, abolish the OAS, onwards towards liberation for all of us. Thank you. End the empire. End the empire. Abolish the OAS. Abolish the OAS. End the empire. End the empire. Abolish the OAS. Abolish